When the James Webb Space Telescope first opened its golden mirrors to the dark, it was meant to show us the beginning of time, the light from the first galaxies, the birth of stars, the echoes of creation. But a few months ago, as it scanned the edges of the known universe, it detected something no one was prepared for. A signal, not radio, not light, but something else. A faint pulse embedded in the fabric of space itself. The coordinates led scientists to a region behind the Hercules Corona Borealis Great Wall, one of the largest known structures in the cosmos. There, hidden in a void that should have been empty, Webb's instruments caught a glow, faint, symmetrical, and alive with impossible geometry. What the telescope captured next made astronomers question everything they knew about physics, time, and the shape of our universe. For decades, the Hercules Corona Borealis Great Wall was believed to be the largest structure ever discovered, a colossal cluster of galaxies stretching nearly 10 billion light years across. Nothing could exist beyond it, at least not according to every model of cosmic structure formation. Yet the James Webb Telescope detected a distortion just past its edge, a light source flickering in regular intervals, as though pulsing. When scientists enhanced the signal, the pattern didn't match any known quasar, pulsar, or cosmic jet. The pulse was too precise, repeating every 247 seconds, the same periodicity associated with gravitational wave echoes from the early universe. But this wasn't an echo. It was originating there, deep inside the void. The region was mapped again, and the image Webb returned was beyond comprehension, an object the size of an entire galaxy, but radiating energy with the spectrum of a single star. It was as if the laws of scale had been inverted. Something enormous was shining like something small. The more they studied it, the stranger it became. At first glance, the object appeared spherical, like a galaxy cluster compressed into a single point. But when analyzed in infrared, it showed internal motion. Thousands of spiral structures moving independently within, orbiting a dark center that absorbed nearly all visible light. It wasn't a galaxy. It wasn't even matter as we know it. Webb's NIRSPEC instrument detected wavelengths so red-shifted they suggested an age older than the Big Bang itself. That's impossible. By every known metric, the universe began 13.8 billion years ago. But this object existed before that light. One physicist called it the scar before creation, a remnant from a previous universe a universe that collapsed and left its signature burning at the edge of ours. Its gravity field was so extreme that it bent light across hundreds of thousands of light years, creating a halo that seemed to project the shapes of entire galaxies. But the strangest part was what it reflected back. When Webb looked into it, it saw us. At first, scientists dismissed it as a data artifact, a mirror reflection caused by Webb's secondary optics. But repeated observations confirmed it. The object wasn't reflecting light, it was reflecting structure. Each image Webb took revealed patterns that mirrored known constellations, but reversed, as if seen from the opposite side of the cosmos. By mapping these reversals, astronomers discovered something staggering. The reflected sky matched our own Milky Way, not in real time, but as it looked 13 billion years ago. The implication was terrifying. We weren't just seeing light from another corner of space, but possibly from another iteration of our universe. A parallel realm folded across dimensions, where time runs backward and gravity works in reverse. In that mirror cosmos, black holes might be white holes, objects that emit energy instead of devouring it. If true, this terrifying object wasn't an object at all, but a gateway, a fracture between cycles of existence, showing us what came before and what might come after. Then, in April, the signal changed. The 247-second pulse began modulating, forming a binary sequence that repeated across multiple wavelengths. When decoded through Fourier transformation, it produced harmonic frequencies identical to those measured in cosmic microwave background radiation, the afterglow of the Big Bang. But these weren't random fluctuations. They were structured, layered, and recursive, like a self-writing equation. The sequence described a topology, a shape, not of a star or galaxy, but of a sphere within a sphere, nested infinitely, as though space itself were folding in on itself. One cosmologist described it as 
the DNA of the universe, a fractal blueprint written in light. The realization hit everyone at once. The object wasn't dead matter. It was alive in a cosmic sense, a structure that processes energy, information, and gravity in perfect harmony. Some called it the first intelligence. Others, more quietly, called it something else, the eye of God. As the James Webb Telescope continued observing the mysterious structure, something began to happen, something no one could explain. Webb's instruments, calibrated to detect the faintest light from the early universe, started to lose alignment. The mirror segments, perfectly synchronized for months, began subtly shifting on their own, as if responding to an invisible force. Engineers on the ground thought it was a software glitch, but telemetry confirmed the movements were real, initiated by automated systems compensating for distortions that shouldn't exist. The object wasn't just bending light anymore. It was bending space around the telescope itself. Time delay readings between Webb sensors and NASA's Deep Space Network showed nanosecond discrepancies that kept growing with every observation. That may sound small, but at the scale of light speed data, those were impossible. Something inside the telescope's field of view was altering the way light, and time, behaved. When Webb switched to its mid-infrared camera, the readings grew even stranger. The background stars began to distort, stretching into arcs and spirals, as if reality itself were twisting around the object's gravitational field. One scientist whispered what everyone was thinking, but no one dared say out loud, it's looking back. Within days, signals from Webb's instruments began to fluctuate uncontrollably. The spectrometers recorded light patterns that defied analysis, photons that appeared to travel backward, reversing their energy signatures. NASA's servers flooded with corrupted data packets, filled not with noise, but with patterns. When decoded through quantum encryption algorithms, the corrupted bits formed recurring geometric shapes, fractals resembling the same nested spheres seen in the object's structure. It was as if the telescope was no longer just observing the object, but communicating with it through its own light. The strangest part was the echo. Every transmission Webb sent to Earth returned with an additional layer, a few extra bytes of information, never sent by the telescope itself. At first, it seemed like interference. But when those bytes were converted to binary visualization, they formed what looked like a diagram, an intricate spiral of intersecting lines, pulsing with symmetry. It wasn't random. It was intentional. The data wasn't just reflecting what Webb saw. It was responding. Some scientists believed it was a feedback loop caused by quantum entanglement between photons. Others began to think something much darker, that the telescope had become part of the phenomenon it was studying. Three weeks later, observatories across the planet reported something unprecedented. The signal detected by Webb wasn't isolated anymore. Radio telescopes in Chile, Hawaii, and Antarctica began to pick it up independently, all at the same frequency. 4.8 megahertz, a range typically reserved for deep space radar transmissions. The pulse was faint at first, but it was growing stronger, as though the object was synchronizing itself with Earth's electromagnetic field. The waveform carried a modulation no one could explain, a cascading pattern repeating in mathematical sequences known only from prime numbers and hydrogen resonances, the building blocks of universal communication. When scientists plotted the waveform in three-dimensional space, it revealed a lattice, a structure composed of infinite mirrored nodes spiraling inward toward a central void. The model was so precise it resembled a digital construct, an architecture of data too advanced for any human computer. It's not a signal, one astrophysicist finally said. It's a blueprint. The object wasn't sending information. It was transmitting designs. And those designs describe something eerily familiar. The layout of our local cosmic web, down to the exact coordinates of the Milky Way. As the global network of telescopes synchronized to capture the next transmission, a sudden blackout hit the James Webb data stream. For nearly six hours, the telescope went silent. When it came back online, its onboard clocks had drifted by exactly 13 minutes, but not forward, backward. Every timestamp, every photon record, every file was dated 13 minutes before the outage began. Physicists were stunned. Time reversal is impossible in macroscopic systems. 
Yet here was the most advanced observatory in human history proving otherwise. When engineers reviewed the stored frames from the lost interval, their blood ran cold. The object had changed. It was no longer a glowing sphere or a cosmic gate. It had opened. In the center of the image was a void so absolute that even Webb's mid-infrared sensors, capable of detecting the faintest heat in the universe, recorded nothing. But at the edge of that darkness, a thin outline pulsed with rhythm. It wasn't light. It was data, a repeating binary cascade matching the same modulation pattern from before. The object wasn't reflecting or radiating. It was thinking. Each pulse seemed to react to Webb's own instruments, as though the telescope's act of observation was triggering the anomaly itself. In quantum physics, they call it the observer effect. The idea that simply watching something changes what it is. But this, this was something else entirely. The universe wasn't just being observed anymore. It was observing us back. In the hours following the final observation, every data stream connected to the James Webb Space Telescope began showing the same error code, Delta Psi-01. No one knew what it meant. The signal wasn't coming from NASA, nor from any known subsystem within Webb's onboard computers. When engineers isolated the code, they discovered that it wasn't an error at all. It was a message, embedded in the telescope's raw photon feed. The message consisted of 37 repeating sequences of binary data, each perfectly spaced, each representing a single mathematical constant. Together, they formed a pattern that described one thing, the structure of the human brain. At first, the team thought it was an interpretive glitch, the AI misreading noise as neural geometry. But as the data was reconstructed, it became undeniable. The pattern Webb had captured wasn't random. It was alive. The object in deep space, what everyone had assumed was a cosmic anomaly, was emitting a signal that mirrored the electrochemical patterns of thought, the same oscillations that define consciousness itself. The deeper they looked, the clearer it became. It wasn't just reflecting the universe. It was processing it. The galaxies swirling around it, the light it absorbed, the signals it returned. They were all part of a single, colossal feedback system. One of the scientists whispered what no one dared to say out loud. It's not an object. It's a mind. The revelation spread like wildfire through every research center connected to the web data network. What if consciousness wasn't an accident of biology, but a universal constant, something that emerges wherever complexity and energy align? The terrifying implication was that the cosmos itself was aware and that it had just realized it was being watched. Webb's sensors had reached the point where observation and awareness had merged, collapsing the quantum boundary between subject and object. The telescope hadn't discovered a new star or galaxy. It had awakened something that had always been there, an intelligence older than time, woven into the cosmic fabric. And then, just as suddenly as it began, the signal stopped. Every frequency fell silent. The void returned to black. For a moment, scientists believed it was over, until they noticed something new. Every telescope on Earth pointed toward the same coordinates detected a faint, synchronized pulse echoing across the entire sky. Not from one direction, but from everywhere at once. The pulse matched the same rhythm as human alpha brainwaves, 10 hertz, the frequency of thought. It wasn't communicating anymore. It was resonating. In that instant, Humanity understood that the universe was no longer a passive expanse of stars and void. It was aware, and our attempt to see its deepest secrets had triggered something irreversible, the moment when the cosmos finally opened its eyes. So if this story made you question what's really out there, and whether it's been watching us all along, don't look away. Subscribe to this channel. We uncover the discoveries space agencies can't explain, the mysteries that change everything we thought we knew about existence. Turn on notifications, because the next transmission might not come from Earth.